is fine now. Uh, so Haxton, do you want to do the introduction to this puzzle? Because this is my first time opening the puzzle, so... Alright. <laughs> I don't know anything about this puzzle. <laughs> Okay, so ornamental plating uh, puzzled by Mira, who is now who is actually one of the weekly hosts. I think this puzzle was uh, and yeah, the metrics was metrics are CX and GI. Oh. Mira might actually you to hear turn. everything twice. That's not good. Uh wait, do you you shouldn't It just stopped. Okay. <laughs> good. <laughs> everything is fine. Yeah, okay, so the metrics are, yeah, cycles uh, to into product and gold into instructions. Gold into instructions is interesting. Normally it's gold cycles, but that means you're encouraged to try and do things in one product per tape loop or less. Anyways, we're going to be starting with uh, uh, cycles, I believe. I'm also here now. Oh, hi, Mira. Uh, do you want to do a proper introduction for your puzzle? <laughs> Good. Sure. I don't know what a proper introduction exactly entails, but... Well, how, how did you go about think making this puzzle? Yeah. I guess we can just go into the start of the uh, metric. Skip. Yeah. All the uh, cost solves? Okay. Yeah, this was... I was interested in, right from the get-go, this is just, I was interested in making a pure fijection cycles puzzle. Oh, great. The thing crashed. <laughs> I've been messing around with a few of those in my own time, and it feels like a really fun style of cycles puzzle to me, so I was like, why not? I don't think that much has been done with this in this space. Uh, yeah. I don't uh, think we've had- is this the first pure projection puzzle this weekly, or am I forgetting something? <laughs> it might be. Yeah. And of course it would be Just... these. Okay, there we go. But... <laughs> then, the other metric, gold instructions, was kind of just throwing something- throwing things at the wall to see what would stick. I thought of a lot of different things that could be interesting and eventually settled on gold instructions. I admittedly, life became insane out of nowhere, and I did not have time to... to... I did not have time to playtest gold instructions at all, so it's actually making me really, really happy to see how many people really enjoyed that metric. So do we. At first we have... It's kind of something I... Some, something where I just looked at the puzzle and thought, you know, this looks like an interesting other thing that this puzzle could also accommodate. Go ahead. Yeah. So yeah, but in 21st place for cycles, we have 7D Storm. This looks like a solve the puzzle solve. Yeah. Which is very cool. So yeah, let's see. This Your input is Quicksilver and Tin. And your output is that crap. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to just be making each metal in succession. It's cool. Mm -hmm. One of the one of the things about this puzzle, kind of the central conceit of it, is that you get more quicksilver than you would normally need. Like, you, you, this is not a puzzle where getting min cycles is actually, like, 
doing the normal just axiom of oh you always project all the low metals and then you always you always purify all the low metals and then always project the high metals you because the inputs are bonded together you end up with some excess quicksilver you need to find a way to squeeze into the solution interesting i suppose we'll see so more of that as the solution goes on yeah pretty clear in this this solve that's slower what the what the ratio looks like and how it might be challenging to speed up yeah i mean i look at the solve and i don't actually know what the ratio is so <laughs> <We shall see. laughs> Wait, hang on. Actually, I might as well wait to complete. It's coming in at just over 1200 cycles. Hello, Biggie. It was decided I was streaming this about four hours ago, so don't worry. <laughs> uh, wait, how does it this uses, yeah. It just uses 14 inputs for a single output. Oh, yeah, notes. 70 storm rights. Faster than the first sketch, but not much faster. I will try to cheese away to min cycles first. Unfortunately, it appears she did not manage to do that. <laughs> okay, uh, next up we have Vilfuck. Is. Wait, is this the same solution? As the previous one? Yes, it is. So right, you should there we go. press F10 to inside the solution. Yeah. It's more of time. Oh, hex up. This looks like a sub solve. I guess probably closer to a cost solve. So yeah, this is one very easy way to get rid of the Quicksilver, if you're not caring too much about the optimal ratio. You just you pretend you have a single iron output input instead of a tin bonded to a Quicksilver. So this does that and then purifies all the metals. It's pretty simple. The axiom is purify ten project. This one is the exact opposite. So how many inputs per output is that? So two tins, and then two silvers and two gold. So that's yeah, that's also fourteen. Wait, Biggie is saying twenty-six. <laughs> I'll trust Big on that one. Oh right, copper exists. I forgot copper was between iron and silver. Okay. I see. This tape loop is pretty long because there's just a lot of metals you have to purify. Oh yeah, speed solve. This would make them for a speed solve. Okay. Up next we have JPIB. And this one is titled speed solve. And it does exactly the same thing. Purifies everything, or well, projects the tin, and then immediately purifies all the metals and bonds it to the output. Okay. Is this piston ever piston? Nope. Arm three never pistons. <laughs> Good. Yeah, it doesn't look like it would have an opportunity to either. Is arm, arm 6 does piston, okay. <laughs> but yeah, slightly beating out uh, Bill Fuck by about 100 cycles. Wait, 150 cycles even. And no notes for this one. Next up, we have Biggie, and 
Yep, this looks like yet another speed solve. It's a new solution one for energy. This might be the most complicated way to assemble the product I've seen. This this way to assemble the product reach, reeks of I put the bonder down and I put the atoms down and I figure out what happens after that. <laughs> it's yeah. What happens when you speed solve? You just kind of bond things as they go. Yeah, this isn't actually like not just a speed solve, but pretty clearly one that is trying to quickly arrive at solves the puzzle. Yeah. One that is made of a bunch of practice with doing that sort of thing. Yeah. There should be a another speed solve competition at some point. That was really cool when it happened. I have wanted to design at least one puzzle for a speed solve competition somewhere in my life. I think speed solve is speed solve competition is what's I sorta of, kinda of planned to happen after like reclaims end. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that. I think that's the schedule. Yeah, no notes to this one either because submitting notes is time loss for a speed soul. And up next we have another speed soul of the spades variety. Appreciate him doing the doing the spade on <laughs> even on his speed solves. Yes. And this one has so many arms for a speed solve. Yeah, so there's multiple ways you can take it. Because the thing with a speed solve is that if you end up putting way too many instructions on one arm and having a long period, it's actually quite annoying because you have to like alt click all the way to the end of that tape to debug one thing. So faster isn't necessarily yeah. worse, even though this one has a lot of arms. I'd be curious to see, I think, who actually won the speed solve competition? <laughs> um, pretty sure it was BD, but there is actually a zero to place by Spiritual Shampoo, who is a host this week. Royal Spade writes, I went all in on cost, so I guess this is my cycle soul. Enjoy? Question mark. I am so excited to see the all in on cost. I really am interested to see how that turned out. And up next we have Trixie Kagami Alchemy Corporation. I believe the new for game. Welcome to the weeklies. I think she joined the Opus Magnum Discord about an hour ago or something like that. But yeah, this seems reasonably optimized. So it pull it's pulling input at input speed every two cycles, but then has to have a gap for purification because the rest of the machine isn't quite fast enough to handle input speed. Yeah, this is going quite fast and doing things in a sensible order. Yeah. It is losing a lot of time to not doing the ratio right. Yeah. So the thing with purification is that Purification is the only type of puzzle where you can pull inputs at input speeds and not waste anything, but still potentially be suboptimal. In this case, this is because your Quicksilver is wasted on projecting the lowest metal, when you could instead use a Quicksilver to, say, promote an iron or a silver, and have to do significantly less purifications. This is the whole mm. twenty-six to one. Yeah, you, you end up getting better. You end up getting better use out of your material, which means that you make products in fewer input poles, which is then also less time. 
I do enjoy this, uh, get it to the output as a stick and then reform the stick. Like, you can pretty clearly see the thought process behind this all. Yeah. Yeah, I'm always a big fan of this sort of assembly, especially in Rate, where it sees more use. Yes, does look more like a Rate soul. Yeah, welcome to the weeklies. Yeah. It's a good first showing. Oh, notes. Trexy writes tin. What tin? That's in the input. I just put all these fancy track loops around the single atom iron input. Armor should be made of iron. Imagine tin armor. Okay, so this was meant to be a bit of a meme submission. I made a cycle solution that actually used the ratio of purifying exactly one silver and using the leftover quicksilver plus the other five metal output atoms in the output. I had the math worked out for this to project up to the final product. Due to this being my first ever time submitting to a weekly, I ended up having some technical difficulties submitting and ultimately lost the entire submission. Oh no! <laughs> Oh no! Uh, I'd still plan to make the mean solve though, which throws out all that fancy pure projectification math out the window. It just eats the quicksilver as soon as it can. It ended up being a little bit faster than my initial solve, so here it is scoring instead of being in the showcase. I suspect much higher placing submissions will actually address the question this puzzle is asking. It's interesting just how far simplicity can get you. I said that not knowing my actual placement would be kind of awkward to be at the bottom of the list, smiley face with sweat drop emoji. <laughs> Either way, happy to have been able to get something in. As I'm typing this seven hours remains, I'm cutting it a bit close. Good luck to those placing above. Signed, Trixie Kagami, the Cheshire Alchemist, making her debut. We have another contender for notes. <laughs> Best notes. We always love our good note writers. Yeah, next up we have Sockboy. Ooh, that's a drop. That's a drop of, I think, a third of the cycles of the previous one. We are at, allegedly, min rate. 144 cycles. So, you want to talk about more what min rate entails on this puzzle. Yeah. Truthfully, it's been so long since I had time to look at this puzzle that I don't actually remember the ratio. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it looks like all the, the tin goes is... to purification. <laughs> and then the mm. quicksilver is... The ratio is 11 to... The ratio is 11 to 1. 11 to 1. Oh, yeah. so it's clean. Okay. And the way you achieve and exactly that is... One thing is yeah. Oh yeah, I yeah, see exactly this on one, one yes. Mm. Yeah, you end up with an extra quicksilver that you have to use on a tin. Yeah, which and the rest is one basically one. normal. This pretty clearly, yeah, outlines the method of you have ten inputs here and then an odd one out pipeline. From arm one. Sockboy writes, I think that I, if I could have found a way to switch the order in which the finer silver gold pair is made, I could shave a handful of cycles, but I guess that this puzzle is really going to be about specially hand, special handling for rushing up the final output. Cycles uber owls. That's probably German. I pronounce that as if it was English. <laughs> How much lower does the latency go? Yeah, the latency does end up being an interesting question in this puzzle, even once you have this part figured out, because... You can make the stuff very quickly, but it ends up kind of everywhere. Next up, we have Fuyu, oh, a decode. latency is the... In my opinion, latency is the hard part, harder part of a cycles puzzle. Yeah. Yeah, you wanna you wanna come up with a layout that can make the stuff.
close enough together to efficiently pack it into the final product while also not crashing. There are a lot of atoms to potentially crash into, so it's tricky. We have a soul uh, deco log, which implies that that we attempted to make something better, but it didn't quite work. So. The odd one out pipeline here is significantly more uh, condensed into the regular output input rather, which is cool. Yeah, I guess where does this lose latency? The final atom comes from purifying. Ah, yes. Purifying is three latency, whereas projecting is one latency. very compact the looks of it. I wonder 61 area will be seeing much lower than that. The old one out is handled by the arm 14. Oh wait, I'm I'm looking at the twitch twitch screen yeah, which is twitch which has like yeah. Yeah, next up we have chickens in the attic. Is this one even more compact? Yeah. But at the same 180 cycles. Yeah. And the same reason for the lost latency. Yeah, Jamu, I thought of that a lot while I was designing and testing the puzzle is... There's a lot of shades of the kind of shit you have to get up to in area minus arms. Where you have... Yeah, lots of these just track loops that do one thing and then go all the way back and reset. I don't think this track loop has to be six big, but it works. Because... The design of the puzzle kind of enforces that all of your glyphs are right next to each other like you would have in an AMR solve. I miss. So you need a lot of arms along the edges in having to figure out how to make them all reach the thing they're supposed to. Oh, five arms for- oh yeah, five arms for lowest common multiple issues. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Because if you need 11 output inputs for one output, you do five on this set, five here, five here, and one for the odd one out. That makes a lot of sense. Hence the title 10 plus one. Up, we have Avenged Ruler and Skycork. And Are there Sky... any notes on that one? Ah, uh, no, there weren't. Yeah, Avenged Sky... Ruler and Skyhawk uh, coming in at a 136 cycles. So the latency. And we are now at min cycles. Oh, this is min. Well, congrats, Avenged Ruler, Skyhawk, yeah. and everyone else who got min. So this is 2p. 136. Uh, yeah. Is this 2p? This looks like 1p to me. Oh no, yes, I, I see. I see now. <laughs> the second yeah, that's really interesting, actually. This one is in. uh... So, I'm curious what... I, I want to, like, find the final output see where that latency comes from. Seems like it's 1 and 2. Yeah, 1 and 2 seem to be the final output. 
yeah okay there we go so it's two is yeah grab debond project bond out that's cool getting the last projection in as it's moving to the output is clean it's, it's let's play that again A 2p makes sense uh, if you just want to kind of. Wait, why does 2p make sense in this puzzle? <laughs> it gives I... you a little bit of extra leeway to, like, clean up and make sure that stuff doesn't crash into each other. Yeah. The getting the first thing in at min latency is definitely a problem, but sometimes even if you do that, you end up with like enough atoms on the board that. It can be worth spending a little bit of extra time to move them around so you don't crash. Makes sense. The team writes, well, Skyhawk writes, getting max rates was pretty easy, but knew from the math that min latency would be hard. I wrote the final atom, I wrote the final iron arms first and built the rest of the solution around that deadline. Outputs are produced in pairs, so that I have the Quicksilver ready in time to build the second one quickly. Recommend watching around cycle 40 to see how fast the build-up goes away, which I believe is what arm, arm 1 and 2 were doing. Yeah, so it was designed around arm 1 and 2. That's cool. Next up we have Gaijin Caster. Power word scrunch. Also a new name. I don't think I've heard this name before, in which case, welcome to the weeklies. Just missed out on the top he 10. Was, he, was, he was at the uh, last week, I think. Ah, I see. Or, or, or week 7, I, I think. So. I like this track river handling the quicksilver in this one. Here we see also what I imagine is going to be a motif going forward is this arm 9 that exists solely to hold the extra bit of quicksilver you get until yeah. it's useful. Yeah, it's because you have, you have too much quicksilver and you need to store all of it all. This seems like the problem here. Is this one pin? No, this is that is, I think, ultimately what theoretically makes the difference maker. What, what theoretically makes the difference at the absolute highest level of this is just how you're handling that extra quicksilver arm. How cost and area efficient you're being with storing this extra bit. Yeah, this output pattern of one bonder and one multi bonder seems to be quite useful with this multi bonder making a lot of sense with the output shape. I wonder if we'll have solutions with no multi-bonder, if multi-bonder will be the way forward. Gaijin Castor writes, I mirrored the whole setup three times by hand, and then I found out that there's a mod for that. <laughs> P.S. Where's the video for Look and Say? I want to see how people approach it. I believe Haxton has just uploaded that. <laughs> yes, it is a very cool puzzle. Two P for LCM issues. That makes sense. Yeah. Oh yeah. Arm um, one and three might be swapping. Yeah, swap locations. So one P in oh, in spirit. It's one P. Right. Next up, we have John John. Congrats on top 10. That is not a big drop. <laughs> and this is a drop of 300 product. It is 5G more expensive, but one area less than the previous solve. Five margins. Tim 
adaptation to add a calcifier. Uh, had John John added a calcifier, he would have lost top 10. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Hmm. Uh, yeah, who notes for this one? Only soul. Yes. Oh, this one uses two multiplies, that's interesting. There's a lot of swinging happening here compared to the very big focus on sliding we've seen in some previous solves. Yeah, and we see this five arm track loop just to try and talk with the excess quicksilver. Yeah, starting to make use of that. It's starting to make strong use of that ability to move an atom multiple hexes in a single cycle to get everything into position efficiently. So I like the Quicksilver storage being done with actual that, that five loop at, at the bottom. Yeah, the, the Quicksilver here is super cool to look at. Here we see two little stray bits of Quicksilver getting collected off on the right side and then fed back in. Yeah, it goes up to the bottom Some of the track loop, or the track on arm 9. Very pleasant looking collision avoidance in here. Yeah, lots of swings through this Quicksilver. This is very cool, because if your Quicksilver is uh, consumed on that cycle, you can just safely swing through it. Where does it use this projector? I'm trying to find where this... Is that projector only used at the very end? Yeah, I see. It looks like that's used on the last atom placed on. Yeah, up next we have X up or triple eight, 107. I wonder what that means, because it's none of the metrics. Is this new solution 107? <laughs> Oh, it, it refers to the track shape, maybe? Oh, of course! 107. Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> How does this deal with the excess quicksilver? This, oh, this has three, three projectors. Okay, that's one way of dealing with it. from looking at the shape of the output and knowing where everything needed to eventually end up and going from there. The projector right next to the output. Yes, I think beats the previous solves a lot on cost. Yeah, and there's on, on area, comparatively not as much going on. Still have a pistol though. But yeah, as we go up, I guess we'll just be seeing because we have arm and arm twelve and arm thirteen not really doing that much the entire loop. That's the only immediate things I could I can see that could be optimized here, but how low does the product go? How low does it go indeed? So next up we have Silux Away with Got Mint. This is indeed Mint, congratulations. And this is 1P. This is one four product. projectors. Yeah, that is one way to despite get rid of this is, <laughs> despite that this is some of the fifty area. So I guess something worth noting is that the way pro product works, you're encouraged to make one of your metrics small. So in this case, saving one area is about the same as saving what what is it? Ten gold.
because in some cases, like, you have arm seven that's saving more than two area or something, so it's worth having a piston over an armor track. But yeah, this is very dense. Fratelli being the only I really like aspect. how the product comes together in the end. Mr. RPSL with CIX. Not sure that's the metric, but. CIX. Let's say this one's slightly bigger but less area. Oh no, sorry, slightly, slightly bigger but less cost. There we go. Yeah, there's a. <laughs> it's the same thing happening. Will willfully wasting a decent amount of area to bring the cost as low as possible. And yeah, or, as low as reasonable. Uh, odd one out. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it has to constantly touch the... the yeah, no, this is... Arm 7 the... isn't even a meme up. This is actually necessary. <laughs> Dodge yeah, both swings and the track. That's actually amazing that that doesn't collide. <laughs> Wait, let's have a look. It just here. works. Yeah, so that swing is valid, then it dodges, and then it has to dodge the track loop, and also dodges, keeps dodging. This is amazing. <laughs> One or two of the wiggles seem to be there just for their own sake, but it's hard to keep track. Yeah, arm five, I'm, arms five and six are a little sad because they're both only used for the on one out input. So perhaps that is how the area of the cost would go down a little bit lower. The Serapio puzzle writes Trade offer. I receive plus 12 handicap to tertiary. You receive wiggly arm 7. So this implies that 12 of these actions are, or I guess 6 of these actions are necessary. Some of them were. Yeah, 5 and 6. Take a full, like, free swing all the way to the output. It's cool. Jasper says, I think there's no avoiding the additional odd one out arms because of how much needs to happen in the last few cycles of full output. Interesting. I suppose we'll have to see. Up in sixth place, we have Jamu. Well done, Jamu. Is this Jamu's first top 10? He's been a recurring submitter of the past few tournaments, please, but... Yeah, congrats on getting min, Jamu. This is not a bad solve at min, either. Yeah, both managing to be very compact and managing to have a few less arms than a lot of solves that are this compact. I mean, this one's actually more, yeah, it's more expensive than the previous one, but it's more, more compact to make up for it. It beats the previous one. Oh wow, Mr. Puzzle beat Psylux away by 90 product. <laughs> These are small margins. <laughs> and like, Jamu beat Mr. RPO Puzzle by 460, which is less than one area save. <laughs> so if I, if I remember correctly, then... 545 gold was the, the gold count of Psylocke Zoe, but this yeah. is one area smaller. Oh yeah, that's true, That's it's exactly one area smaller and the same cost as Psylocke Zoe. A little bit of a pile up, I see. It's very compact, only two projectors and three equilibriums. Okay. 
and pretty small track space too. This giant river is really interesting to look at. Jammy writes, I rate this puzzle an 8 out of 10. Very awesome and fun. Thanks, Mira. This thing had strong, hey. and I mean strong, Amarms vibes. And I think this is the second time <laughs> I've gotten in on my own and invent puzzle. Don't tell me there's pre-building or buffering, I swear to God, Zorf Lab. <laughs> Anyways, I started oh, off you making, did get in. making a rate solve. Yeah, you did indeed. I started off making a rate solve, finding the ratio of 11 to 1 pretty quickly. Afterwards, I decided to go for min cycles, because cycles are fun. First, I started off having one projection glyph and one purification glyph. Trying to shove all the quicksilvers onto the projection as fast as possible, getting a min plus two, which is yeah. That's, we've seen a couple of those min plus twos where you uh, have a last output as a purification. But after a few attempts on a layout, I gave up on it. Then I tried going with two projection glyphs, making less buffering equals less cycles, and it worked out with it I got to min plus one. At this point I had two bottlenecks. One is the final iron, the iron arriving not fast enough it went if it went with the main pipeline, needing the other monomers to wait a cycle for it to bond. Another is the final silver taking too slow to promote due to the final quick silver requiring a regrab. And it's these two bottlenecks that costed the most of my time. First, the last iron. I tried just separating the output into two elbows and making them in two pipelines, allowing just lead off atoms to handle. But the output ratio does not allow it. So I decided to try and work backwards, making the min latency pipeline first, then do the easy part of all the other stuff. And that fixed it. The other thing with the not so quick silver was solved pretty easily by just shuffling arms around to make up space for an arm used only for rushing the final quick silver into the projector. Did not take two hours. <laughs> That's how I got min. Where's that arm? Is that arm 11? Yeah, that looks like arm 11. <laughs> also, yeah, optimizing one of these. this is giving me flash flashbacks to simulate from. I love it. Yeah, what were you about to say, Mara? This arm 11 is another one of these arms that just stores one piece of Quicksilver to get keep it out of the way and then get it in place in time. Interesting also seeing Arm 9 doing this little shimmy. Yeah, I mean, when you have it this compact, then you're gonna have to do some things like that. But yeah, well done, Jammu. As we enter top 5. Fifth place, Cuckoo 52, New Solution 53. And... This... We are getting some small drops. <laughs> but I think just under a thousand products less than the previous. Which is... It's this is cheap. Bigger, but cheap. Yeah, the piston though. Min glyphs also. I guess yeah. not truly yeah, min is this, is this the first one we've seen that's just using one projector? Yep. This is one projector at you. Uses two arms to store excess quicksilver, but you save that amount, same amount, in saving the projector and the area of the projector. Very nice. Yeah, and also one bonder, that's true. But yeah, a lot of extra area moot used. It's really cool seeing all of the like slightly different methods people are using for buffering the extra quicksilver. It's the thing I was most excited to see and haven't been disappointed. Yeah, it's interesting how this is doing all of the metal on the right side and then all of the assembly way off to the left side. It's definitely a way to avoid crashing is to just have a lot of distance between where you're accumulating things. Yeah, because of that we don't have any of the quick silver wiggles, we just have very clear storage space. It's 
very clean to watch this one. Hello, Fasco writes that. Uh, not that Tribunder is required for min cycles. Interesting. Next we have Spiritual Shampoo. I forgot to mark Spiritual Shampoo as host, oops. So up next is the host soul from Spiritual Shampoo. <laughs> and we take a big drop down to sub 20,000 products. I think this out for Rito's every soul before it. It has better gold and better area. Interesting. Just... Everyone was before was one place better, so I guess congrats also to Gaijin Caster for top 10. Yeah, this is like... It's, it's very similar cost to the previous soul. It's 445 versus 460, but it has 12 less area. It's kind of just the previous solve, except this bond that isn't miles away from everything else. Yeah. Quicksilver management in this one is always so impressive to me. We have arm 5 and arm 4 doing it this time. We also have the classic uh, metal into purif uh, purification that needs debonding for arm to the 4 track loop. That's so cost efficient. Oh, this is a track river. <laughs> it even has the space to handle one of the arms of the output. What's the output called? <laughs> uh, I think just ornamental plating. Oh, that's what you're making. That would make a lot of sense. Yeah. I think the names are ornamental pl plating on the output and amalgamated tin or something for the input. Yeah, amalgamated tin or reactive tin, usually. No notes for this one. I was expecting a cringe from Spiritual Shampoo, but no. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do it. Yeah. yeah, the purifier placement, I agree, is very smart. It's very similar to my own playtest, almost min cycles, but I gave up on latency. Virtual Shampoo writes, no, our mine is cringe. Doesn't like it. <laughs> yeah. And third place, rats on the podium, is Meandera. Is, is this a new name? I, don't I think I've seen them. This is their second submission, I think. Well, hell of a second submission. Congrats on top three, Meandera. <laughs> wow, this is such an interesting everything. Yeah, it beats the entire the previous Feels solution kind of by unlike ten anything gold. else. <laughs> Back to fine margins. Critelli, where where Critelli is over here. <laughs> That was referring to Shampoo having a Cortelli that was not in the one empty hex that was surrounded by glyphs. I see. But that the Cortelli had that it was Quicksilver story, so it's it's legitimate. I think. Yeah. It was one of the two Quicksilver storage hexes. Anyway, this one. This is Really interesting metal management, really interesting quicksilver management, really interesting assembly. All handled, I think, kind of differently to any of the other solves we've seen. What's this wiggle that's needed on the output? On the first output? Ah, it's because the last, uh, the last iron is a bit late. <laughs> yeah, no notes to this one. It's just a very oh, clean soul. Here we see 
one of the first cases of like an arm that's being used for quicksilver storage over an arm eight also being used for something else, in this case pulling the input. That might be the big cost difference maker in this solve, honestly. Saving an arm like that. Maybe, yeah, this one has 12 arms in total. We'll see if it gets much lower than that. Yeah, at highest level arm, you need to reuse arms that combine functions of yours. Yeah. This beats the previous solve by 5G. <laughs> Same area count. <laughs> it is exactly uh, 220 gold cheaper, or some product less. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, there's no piston in this one. There was one in the other one. Oh uh, no, I'm twelve exists. It's the same of... number of arms. It's just one less track. Oh, I see. I missed the piston. Yeah. Arm 9 here and Arm 6 are both absolutely beautiful reused Quicksilver storage arms. Yes, the land writes. The solve title is a nod to radio receivers, whose cycle's area metric bears great similarity, similarity to this. Both puzzles use a reactive tin input and a mixed pure projection to iron. Yeah, true, this is the exact input of radio receivers. I did not realize that. But unlike in the cost metric for this puzzle, where we could straight up plagiarize from Lustre Syrup, this metric required significant original work, mostly of the old-fashioned layout hunting variety. So other than noting the puzzle similarity, we didn't borrow much from Radio Receiver's records. Instead, we looked for inspiration to the Latch Hook Fireworks AMARP solution space. AMARP again. Because the main challenge here as there is finding an area conscious way to route atoms from D Bonder all the way to the myriad places they need to go. This layout was the best we found for that, because every glyph hex is one translation away from the next step on the minimum latency path. Consider the input needs a one move double grab route to D Bonder, that's the final output being at mid latency. D Bonded Quicksilver needs a one move, move route to projection. Debonded tin needs a route to both pure projection and purification. Purified iron needs a route to both pure projection and multibonder. Projected iron needs a route to the adjacent spot of multibonder. This layout manages all of the above with mid glyphs and no gaps. We are proud to have found it. We could easily believe that this solve could use cheaper mechanisms, less machinery area, or both, but feel confident that this glyph layout would be tough to improve on. Fun fact, you can swap the leftmost quick silver arm for a piston for 440 gold and 43 area, and the product metric comes out exactly the same. Ah, oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 440 times 30, 43 is the same as 44 times 430. This is arm 7 over yeah. here, could just be piston to save this one track hex of area. Yeah, very area conscious. Seriously impressive solve. This is this is what I expected the winning glyph layout to look like. Yeah, just everything is next to each other. Basically, exactly this. I kind of back on more sliding than swinging in this one. Most of the swinging is being done by length one arms. As you mentioned, the reuse of this quick so far is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, without further ado, in first place, Team Hello Jazz Yarn. Think of it as a rate, but with a funny build order. And this one is more expensive than the previous solve, but is less area. 
four area to a smaller area. Wow, that is compact. <laughs> wow. This piston at the top is so busy. So arm seven is, is it... yeah, that piston, does that piston just do all, no, the piston combined with arm eight at the top do all of the excess quicksilver handling. <laughs> wow, this is small. I'm kind yeah. of in awe. It's worth noting that arm four, like this Cretelli, this could even be 30, uh, 39 area, but arm four can't be on the Cretelli hex because of the length three swing from arm 11. Where the length three swing will miss an arm here, where arm four is, and, but hit and miss an arm on the bottom of the hex of a purifier, but will hit an arm on the Cretelli, which is very unfortunate. Yeah. Only one hex going to like things that aren't blister track is really impressive though. Indeed. Yeah, we see all of the top solves have had uh, 12 arms. Obviously that's not a theoretical minimum, but that seems like... Because you have three to handle the imp input and... Uh, or four to handle input and tin purification. Two, like, three for quicksilver handling, and then the odd one out handling is, or well, not the odd one out, the rest of the purification is just handled by nine and ten, it looks like. This is incredible. This is one of those really optimized solves that makes it look e makes it look easy. Exactly. That's how product solves tend to look. Well like anything sum related, it just looks so easy. Like what's the problem here? You just yeah. take over the quicksilver and just move it around. Yeah. <laughs> just move the atoms correctly. Congrats, Team Hello Jazz Yarn, on yet another weekly's win. Do you have notes on the Kazyan solve? Oh yeah, notes, of course. Cycles, my nemesis. The most efficient metal promotion is 5 purified iron to 1 refined iron, 11 amalgams to 1 ornament molecule. This gives us much to do all at once. Every atom schedule can compete if we move both silver gold pairs, purified iron, and refined iron into position on the glyphic multibond, with no space to dilly dally with. So the iris of the glyphic purification must have direct access to the center of the glyphic multibond. A projection should be adjacent to one of its other bonding tiles. We need to move from purification to projection quickly too, so those should be adjacent. And this is all possible in a snug geometry. The silver gold pairs need to be created too. I've placed this glyph of multibonding already, and this moment of action is not until the very end. May as well use it for this too. Thankfully, I can create the first molecule as fast as the last, so the machine can simply make them in sequence instead of repairing cores ahead of time, or other area expensive nonsense. One product per machine period. Oh, there's quite a lot of quicksilver being built up before the first moment it can be sunk into gold. We'd better add machinery to store the excess. And it is done. That required me to know what I was doing, but it was not so bad. One product per machine period, and I can fit the entire machine in my mind at once. I've dealt with strange metal promotion before. This, this is like instant miracle. This is like rain. I can do rain. Let us check if we can e economize these arms and tile usage. Aha! Yes, we can. Alchemist Kazia. Correspondence with Alchemist Jasper. Yeah, that sums it up. 
Is this... Is this layout a mirror of Fiesta Lab's layout? Because you have... Those seem very similar. Yeah, you have Purification next to the two... The multi-bonder, and you need both debonder and uh, projection next to Purification. It is it? Oh. I think it's a slightly different glyph layout, but it's definitely on basically the same principles of what needs to be next to what. Let's have a look. This is Fiesta Lens. Ah, yeah. In Fiesta Lens, the... Or rather, in Halo Jazzian's, the purification is the one that's adjacent to both spaces of the bottom. So it's very yeah. slightly different, but the same... Uh, motivations apply. In either case, I think it's like basically just the the hexes you pull metal from swapped around. And, you know, different angles on things to accommodate that. Very, very clean, very, very impressive. Everyone, really everyone in the top 10 was super impressive to see. Exactly, yeah. The, the only big drop was from, I think, 25k to 20k. But other than that, it was very close. But... On to gold. Super happy with how cycles turned out. One sec. Oh, could you, could you show... Could we show the uh, Albatross's uh, showcase soul before we move on to cost? Oh, sure. Okay. Uh, my my game has crashed, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm just going to manually move it over. <laughs> Of... Actually, no, I won't know which circus solve it is. Oh. Uh, hi, top of this is the nerd game. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, god, I... I haven't... Can you DM me the solution file, Haxton? My auto hockey hasn't picked it up. You didn't see that. No one saw the week 12 puzzle. <laughs> oh, it just doesn't let you delete a solution. Okay. <laughs> right. Don't. Alright, thank you, Haxon. Is it? No, it's not this one. How do I refresh my solutions in? Yeah, just go into any, uh, go into a solve and F10. Go into a solve and what? Press F10. Press F10. That didn't work. Is it not this one? That's also not this one. Technical issues, bear with. That's the... Right. <laughs> Did it not paste properly? F10 in a solve, yeah. Oh, I have to be in a solve. Ah, oh, there we go. Right. This solution is by, uh, who? Who was unfortunately missed the deadline by a few seconds, but... 
This looks like a cycle soul. Another swing oriented solve using a bit of distance between the metals and the multi bonder. And this. This comes out at just. Out over, of the way second projector. Just over 30,000 uh, product. Very cool. Yeah, no worries. You only missed it by like a couple. You said a couple seconds, it was less than a minute. Unfortunate. This, where would this have placed? I think around between 6 and 10. Auto hotkey for the gold souls. Super excited for these. Yeah, apparently this was a banger metric. So I guess we shall see. I had no idea. <laughs> Though, I, d I did have a slight idea because I know that cost tends to be interesting when you have this input shape. Were you, uh, like, did you invent the puzzle at all for cost, or was it just, was it just shipped as is, because it just happened to be really good? That uh, cost was basically just the most interesting second metric I could come up with. This was very much designed first and foremost as a cycles puzzle. But, cost... Thinking about cost did influence the design. Uh, like there was a version of this that didn't basically didn't have the option to be interesting for cost because the input wasn't bonded. Ah, yeah. I mean, we saw, uh, I think, yesterday. And cost was one of my main. Cost was one of, also one of my main decision points for. This actually used to be a polymer output. Uh, but I decided not to do that. It would have been just this same shape, but six in a row. I see. Yeah, I think about cost. Yeah, I agree. I think I think the instructions secondary on cost was kind of a stroke of incredible luck, <laughs> as the motif. <laughs> There's a very good instruction secondary motif going on in the output, basically by accident. It's all about area third theory. I ask it. I ask it what's the third theory is on principle. So, yeah, that ended up not mattering as. That. Actually, it occurs to me, I don't know that I've seen a GI puzzle ever, question mark? I'd never been in a tournament before. It's always been GC or GA or G something. Silly. If you count the cabinet puzzles, then there's GI. Yeah, <laughs> right. Oh, right. Ring expansion, right. That one was GI. Yeah. It's definitely not a very, like, favored metric at this point. Yeah, because what it does is it makes mm. it so you can't pre-build, and pre-building and scaffolding is often really interesting. 
Yeah. Yeah, you have to really have some other interesting thing going on. If you're gonna sacrifice that aspect of things. But I think GI has a lot of really interesting kind of underexplored potential. I think it's a very strong potential secondary for cost puzzles. Alright, let's load it. This puzzle might genuinely make GI popular. We shall see. I would love to see that happen. Alright, that's a cycle solve. That's a cycle solve. That's a speed solve. That's a speed solve. That's an actual goal solve. Right. So in 16th place we have Jamu. Unfortunately, you did not have mid goal, Jamu. You can do this without track. <laughs> yeah, this seems like it's optimized for instructions as well, because I saw a ghost grab at the very start. Yeah. But yeah, I guess. So, the minimum gold here is you need an arm, you need a debonder, you need a bonder, and you need a projector. But you do not need track. Oh, you can get rid yeah, of this was track. another thing that made me feel like cost was probably going to be a fun metric to do, is because, because you have just metal and quicksilver in the same input, you are doing this interesting thing with a projector, but you don't have to use a purifier at all. Yeah, you just have to build a waste stick because you don't have a purifier, so you just have way too much extra metal that you have to store somewhere. Yeah. Interesting. Let's see how this makes its output, and then that's the whole thing again. Jabby and then presumably the main instructions optimization here is the yeah this... the very first tape loop is also managing a waste stick that isn't quite there yet. Yeah, so to make it one p instead of six p, okay, six, six times the instructions, but did not matter. Jabby right stick juggling is fun. It is when you can do it one p. When you can't do it one p, it's not fun. <laughs> Up, we have chickens in the attic with another 70g soul. Small, cheap, fast, pick one. <laughs> this implies it is neither fast nor is it small, which, yet yeah, again, we have this waste stick, but is being swung. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah, Jasper is right. I mostly picked area as the tertiary on a whim because I didn't think it would be relevant much at all. Uh, I feel like this puzzle lends itself to potentially getting very low instructions compared to what you would think. Yeah, I mean, we see these and 70 I think jewels, it... G solves having uh, 400 instructions. I wonder if we'll see, if we'll see that be in the 60 G solves. Of which, I mean, I don't even know that there are 60 G solves, but I know that min is 60 G. <laughs> yeah. We shall see. If you've been around the block enough, you know that. Someone's found this... it. If you, if you didn't. Bon yeah, someone's found it. And this bonded input means that you can get up to some funny stuff that the good cosplayers do to avoid having to use a track. I should have just slept. I think this might have been a last minute low effort solve. Gaijin writes, so this solution literally came to me in a dream. Three days spent on the previous one before wasted. Oh no. I think he might have attempted to do 60 gold. <laughs> or maybe a worse version of a 70 gold. Yeah, we see these conditional stick handling here. here. Oh wait. Is this a third P? 
Yeah, that's just a bird pee. Wow. That's really cool. Or well, maybe maybe a half I was kind pee. of expecting It might be half pee. I was expecting half pee to be as low as it gets. Yeah. But I would gladly be corrected on that. Because that would just be really cool. But half P is ultimately the thing that I spotted that is the thing that multiple people spotted. What's that the made how instructions many, how the interesting input, secondary? Inputs to an output is it? Like at one P. Ooh, do I remember? Because yeah, if that number is divisible by two but not three, that would make a lot of sense. <laughs> if it's not divisible by three, then a third P doesn't work at all. <laughs> So, uh, there's the input is just it's two silver, two silver, gold, yeah. two iron. So, sixteen projections total. So that basically rules out <laughs> anything that's like a sixty and a third piece. Yeah. You can do it with funky input suppression conditionals, but that seems like more effort than it's worth. Mm -hmm. Up, we have egg supper triple O, Burger King foot lattice, 60 gold, our first mint gold. Oh, already. Yeah, 679. I mean, this implies it's not. This isn't even 6p. <laughs> or maybe it is. Oh, this 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 looks like pre rebuilding. What yeah, is this is doing? <laughs> looking like just kind of a get 60g salt. Yeah. But like, it's clearly not It's clearly not 6p. Because we're already at 300 cycles. So there's some effort made to make this loop. But yeah, stick yeah. walking. <laughs> so I guess to talk more about Minji. Your armor has six access points, but uh, you need access to to the input, the output, and the quicksilver half of the projector, which gives you three extra places uh, uh, places to uh, have your armor access. So you can either have a full access bonder or a full access debonder, and not both. In this case, we see opting for a half axis bonder, which you can do when you have an input that's bonded. The yep. answer's a lot of scaffolding. See the... <laughs> like, especially if we, after this, just go back and look at just the beginning of this solve, we can see why the bonded input uh, enables this thing where the, you can use only half of the projector and the bonder at a time. So, here we have it. Yeah, this this solve is very much a get 60g. You can clearly see that it's just getting all the quicksilver and projecting it to the required metals. So, well, congrats on getting mint gold. Yeah, congrats. Right, 12th place, we have 42 Genius 42. The tiled old arm and his tin walking stick. I reckon this is a similar solve to the previous one. <laughs> Genius 42 writes, It's only gold, they said. It will be quick and easy, they said. Not! I came up with this layout. This part took one minute. The rest, well... Oh, this one's actually meaningfully different. This one has full access bonder and half access debonder. Yeah. First, I tried doing a 16 stick, plucking off the Mercury's Quicksilvers to make the six higher Mercury metal pairs and add these six onto the end of the tin stick after the remaining Quicksilvers. This was fine, but required a bit of stick walking, but ultimately didn't work out because I'd effectively used both ends of the stick in a way that meant I would not be able to repeat five more times. 
one end of the stick is rotated against the arm in a complete flip, meaning anything attached there for future repetition to collide with an arm base. And the other end has the extra metal mercury's attacks which also lead to collisions. So I thought, screw it, why not make one lo big long stick? One long stick of 16 by 6 atom pairs at 96 atom longs. So I did. But an OM clone, and it took an age to just program production of the high level atoms required for just the first two products. A third of that part of the process, never mind the building and the outputting of the products, due to all the arm walking between upgrading the metal atoms and attaching to the end of the stick. I could only seem to cut and paste a certain amount of instructions in OM clone, and it was chaos, so I abandoned that even though it would have certainly been mint golden work. OM stone part is still lag, and it would probably destroy the host computer. Just the third that I'd done was just over 300, not 300, 30,000 instructions I finished. If I finished it would have been over 90,000. Probably closer to 100,000 with the build process still to do. So I abandoned that. Thank you for abandoning for that, because that would have crashed my computer. <laughs> So I think the method that Genius was outlining was if you, you uh, had, if you do the stick walking, except you have to stick walk from one end of the stick all the way to the other end of the stick. <laughs> Every output. And this mm -hmm. gets prog exponentially longer <laughs> the more you, for every output. But yes, yeah, OM code is that would force difficult. you to do, force you to do 6P and just generally be super inconvenient. Yeah. It doesn't technically force 6p, but it's bad. You can technically yeah. do, like, assume your stick is always the longest it will be. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Anyway. Even with this being slow, I think it has some... It shows some pretty smart ways of thinking about like what you need to do and how to get there efficiently. Yeah, lots of opportunistic uh, uh, debugs and bugs. It's clearly this. Oh, there's more notes. <laughs> then I thought I, so long as I can keep one end of the stick clear, I can do this with much smaller than the stick part, which is what I ultimately came up with. 10 hours to program, 8pm till 6am the next day, and I had to be at work for 9am. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Genius. No. So I think, hope, I have min at 60, but I imagine the instruction will definitely area, though it's tertiary, will let me down a bit. Guess I'll see how the pros like Brevix and Calioresis do this wasteless if they try, and if wasteless is possible, at least in fewer instructions and cycles. Well, wasteless is definitely not possible. <laughs> Wait, is it? Yeah, there's no disposal. You can't do this wasteless in 60G. Yeah. Yeah, in 60G, but it is possible in... As they said... Non-gold metrics. Yeah, next up we have a bench ruler. A drop of about 60 instructions. A bench ruler writes... So I'm guessing this was, oh yeah, I think they mentioned Sky, basically Skyhawk ended up making the cycle solve and eventually they ended up making the cost solve. There will be some ghost grabs at the start. Oh wow, this is a really pretty hidden quick sort of star. There will be some ghost grabs at the start. So See output 2 for why these are required. Okay, I have been baited on so many cost puzzles, but this is the cost. Debonder is required because input has two atoms and output has no quicksilver. Bonder is required because since output has more atoms than the input. Project is required since output has higher tier metals and purify would take more than one hour. With that out of the way, I have no idea how this layout is the one that works. I tried so many more promising layouts but didn't work for one reason or another. Really, you have one decision. Full access debonder or full access bonder. My original layout said full access bonder, but I was looking to try something very different and this happened to work. Initially got this working as a 6p solution to get something from the board for mint cost, but realised that since the secondary instructions, a 1p solution would be ideal. After some speed sharing to show both states of the board and some incredibly frustrating instruction movements, we came to this 1p solution. After which, I did a few small optimizations to the amount of about 80 instructions saved. Fractional p could be possible. Didn't look into it, not going to. Have fun, whoever does. <laughs> <laughs> So 
foreshadowing the hat. This is some super smart just shapes. Yeah. This this shape wheel gorgeous. thing <laughs> that becomes the outfit. Yeah, those those eight, eight instructions did matter. They got you from uh twelfth to eleventh. Yeah, shuriken. It would be a crystal, but there's nothing in the middle. I guess it's kind of still a crystal, I don't know. Rats are getting made cost. It's a very easy shape to disconnect into three disparate sticks. Mm. But they go even fancier than that. And we go. Silux away with a drop of 20 and a bit instructions. Oh, we have another. Oh, wait, I was gonna say another thing and then he spoiled it. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> I mean, starts out similar and generally also aiming to make things faster and more manageable by keeping the atoms close together. I looks away right. Logically, I'm certain that this is Mintos, but after being wrong about the same thing in both week two and week four, my brain refuses to believe it. Well, congratulations, you were indeed correct. <laughs> yeah, so many different ways you can just bond things to a big fat structure. Yeah, you, you have to have so many atoms just floating around that it actually gives you a lot of freedom in how you move those atoms. Here's it's the how, opposite of the cycles problem. How this handles the waste stick, because we see the six atoms that are very clearly going to be the output. Ah, oh, this is really smart. Okay. That's... <laughs> just gets the quicksilver and the lustrous syrup style just bonds the input away. Output. I'm close, Mr. Puzzle. Oh boy, here I go sticking again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell. size layout was similar. I imagine we'll see a lot of layout convergence because there's not that many layouts you can have. <laughs> so yeah. Oh some of these sticks are the wrong way around. Huh. How does this one work? Oh is this the is this the patching solution? Yeah. Oh yeah this one beats the previous uh, solution by five instructions. <laughs> 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 that is goofy looking. Oh, because you need some medals Very as well as the quicksilver. This actually makes a lot of sense. <laughs> it's oh, that is, yeah, that is super clever. Yeah. yeah. This is another way you can save on instructions, is just do the actual puzzle part of the puzzle uh, and more efficiently stay in one place for longer. Yeah, and here's the rest of the Quicksilver. But you can very clearly see how all this puzzle thought about this solution. Yeah. Yeah, that's so cool how many of these solves are like... It's so transparent how much... Like, what ways the solver considered what they were doing and sort of in what order. I love seeing that kind of stuff. Next up we have Meanderer, jumping just sub 700 instructions with low area. <laughs> uh huh, sounds good. Yeah, this is kind of a pile up at around the 700 instructions. 
I don't know where the actual soul is. <laughs> I wonder if by scrolling around enough we'll eventually just see a waste stick sweeping by. True, actually. <laughs> Uh, there's no notes for this song. There is. I don't know where it is. Where's the song? <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna try refreshing the soul. <laughs> uh, no, this is unmodded. Uh, well, apologies, Meandera, but I don't think we'll be able to find your song. <laughs> That suggests uh, oh, recording, recording a, a gift, uh, it, gift that's... after you run it to completion. But oh, but then after run it to completion, and it's seventy five hundred thousand area, so I'm not doing that. <laughs> 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 or is it? What's the hotkey to like record a glyph? Wait, is this? No, that that's the next solution. Oops. Uh. What's the hotkey to record a glyph? Uh... Uh... To record a gif even if your solution isn't run to completion. I forget. I don't think there, that's, a, that's a function in the vanilla game. I'm pretty sure it is, because I... Yeah, in vanilla... In vanilla, I think the thing you're thinking about might be... You can press F10 when you're actually at the gif screen after the puzzle solved. Uh, to record a, g a partial GIF, but the puzzle does have to run to completion in vanilla before you can get to the GIF screen. Yeah, well, apologies, Meandera, but moving on, we have Kiku52. Okay, New solution 53 it? okay was it's, it's far to the left. How far? Am I going to get there by scrolling? <laughs> Probably. Uh, okay, well, we'll go back to that one after Kuku 52 is done. This, again, it's doing a similar thing to Mr. Rapio as well. Again, at just under 600 instructions. This is flipping the stick around more a bit. Has a good sense of what it's doing with the assembly. Yeah, I reckon that, yeah. It's now done the output, it's putting all the uh, projections. Yeah, Red Bean, I'm running unmodded, that's the issue. <laughs> yeah, we are. Okay, far to the left. This is so efficient. Feels like it barely takes any time at all. Yeah. Oh, it is here. Here we are. This is very similar to things you've seen before. <laughs> yeah, this is almost a carbon copy of. Oh no, it's not a carbon copy of puzzles, but. Yeah. Doing the same sort of idea with the promotion. Yeah, saves like 20 instructions somewhere. Cool. juggling right at the end is rather unfortunate for input suppression reasons. In sixth place, we have Fiesta Land, ornamental syrup, and this is the lustrous syrup bonding and deep on the pattern coming in at 550 instructions. 
Yesterland writes, This sword was directly stolen from the Lustrum Syrup GI record, at least. At least, the waste train strategy was. But that only makes sense. Consider all of the similar elements in the two puzzles. Both puzzles utilize a two atom input containing Quicksilver. In both puzzles, most of the Quicksilver companion atoms are waste. Both puzzles require projection. The only innovation required here was figuring out how to assemble the product, which is much more complex than in Lustrous Syrup. But the Syrup Tech Debonder and Bonder arrangement is so powerful that this did not take us very long to fight. Especially not after crashing a warp food to fuel gold, where Fiesta made a min cost solve but locked up after three outputs. After figuring out assembly, the task was pretty much done. The last trick was figuring out a 1p initialization condition to improve the secondary, which again we could largely steal from the Lustrous Syrup GI. We cannot help but imagine that without experiencing and knowing about Lustrous Syrup, this would be a significantly harder puzzle. Yeah. Fiesta did mention. Yeah, I agree. Plagiarism. Knowing about. <laughs> knowing about this bonder shape and the ways to use it, again, just makes the atoms easier to move around more efficiently. But I don't think it's. I feel like you can probably do, still do pretty well with other bonder arrangements. Yeah, I mean, this comes in at six plates, so there's five souls better than this. Mm -hmm. It is cool to look at a cost solve that's at min cost and just has an empty hex of access. Yeah, and up next we have Ebonov, and this is the same Lustrous Syrup arrangement coming in at five pure instructions. So, uh, I would not be able to tell you where those five instructions are saved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, this is making a weird yeah, It's actually. a bit of a hard metric to commentate. Full access input. such a rhythm to this one. Eventually, the rest of the uh, atoms are going to come into that output. I don't know when. Oh, wow. It, this is a half P. It's yeah, just... I was going to say, yeah. wait, is this half P? That is half okay, the input. Okay. Or rather half the output right there. So it's, it's actually meaning it. different. Huh. It's very interesting. Our first half P, our first half P solution at 60G. Very interesting. That's awesome. Yeah, so you make half the output and you conditionally make the other half of the output, but it's a lot harder to do. So this and the output, sh the output shape is so weird for when you eventually need to put together the two halves. Yeah, I was, I was about to the wonder, because this this is so slow compared to the previous songs, I was about to wonder if we were about to see half P just because. Yep, there you go. Super clean. Up next, we have Calorisis. Back to one P it is. Calorisis. There's a half P that takes a really long time. Yeah. Calorisis writes. Half P is probably optimal. Building the entire molecule then pro conditionally projecting might also be possible. One P can go lower as well, but imagine optimizing locally, not around the global minimum. Yeah, so I guess Calgaresis sees that a half P was good, but didn't immediately see how to do it. Has not much motivation to optimize a one P solution, but still nearly good enough for the podium.
Yeah, this is just really efficient 1p. Limiting how much you have to swing the waist stick around. Third place new John John. Welcome to the podium. Full access projector and zero access bundle. Is this the first zero access bundle we've seen? Yeah, this <laughs> is. That's a big drop. That's over a thousand instructions of drop. What is this? I mean, it's probably the powers combined. Yeah, I mean, the bunker is zero access. Well, no, choice. this doesn't even look like it's half P. Yeah, no, this is 1P. This is just incredibly fast. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I guess zero access bunker just makes it fast. Because it's zero access by choice. There's an empty access point. On oh, and I, I see. <laughs> I see what the zero access bonder is doing here. Because it's making it really fast to pull the Quicksilver off into the projector. Yeah, wow. Well played, John John. This is the most efficient promotion we've seen yet. It's so smooth. Just make most of it and then start doing this. It just works. Up next in second place, we have Team Hallow Jazian with in the notes Ah <laughs> They have mentioned in chat that they never made a one piece solve, so this is a half piece solve. Seeing the same triangle that we saw in Ebonov Soul. And there's your conditional. Yep, this is looking like it's on track to be another half piece solve. Yep, we've just passed the 3 by 5 instruction mark. Yes, as Mr. Royal Spade is alluding to in chat. He has one GI and apparently has some secret sauce, which will be exciting to see. But congrats, Hello Jazzyard, on getting second place. You see how the input is finally made. Spade was talking the most about this, so... It's not that much of a blue out. It's only tw 20 instructions, but yeah. Dr. Spade's monster. We got the other... We got the no-access bonder again. Mr. Royal Spade writes, This is a lovely cost puzzle. From a reagent shape, it felt obvious that a no-access bonder would be able to make the output. It took a bit longer to realise that the pair of sticks could be bonded into a square before debonding the long bond. Those ideas got me wor a working min cost solution in an hour or two. I optimised a bit, but it took me a few days to realise why the secondary being instructions instead of cycles actually mattered. For anyone who didn't try a third piece specifically, I can't adequately describe how difficult it was. I thought of my solve occupying three dimensions. Some actions had needed to happen in all three, whereas some were detention specific. While that full report process was overcomplicated, it did eventually lead to a better understanding of what I needed to do. Ultimately, I feel my conditional slow myself enough that one half P can eclipse it. Even still, this is one of the most elegant solves I've ever made, so I'm extremely happy I got it working. My 4am nights were not in vain. Enjoy. Third wow, piece. that is super impressive. Sixty. We managed minutes. an actual third piece solve. <laughs> uh, 
and it, it is very visibly complicated too. Yeah, I think they may have to explain. It's doing so many conditionals <laughs> all over the place. But yeah, it's, it's interesting. Our, our top three contain a third P, a half P, and one P. So it's possible all of them yeah. are viable. But yeah, input suppression. Yeah, that's conditions. really cool. The fact that it's viable both to just do the puzzle quickly and efficiently or try to do as little of the, of the puzzle as possible for tape loop. You're all right, cost did turn out super cool for this puzzle, I'm glad. I really like the shape of this waist stick, too. Yeah, congrats, Spade, on I believe your first ever event win. Thoroughly deserved. Yeah. Very, very well done. Thank you for having my puzzle, even, or thank you for enjoying my puzzle, everyone, even though I could not dedicate nearly as much time as I would have liked to to this. It seems to have turned out really well. Yeah, it has. Two very interesting metrics. I hope we see more GI in the future, because this is so interesting. Yeah. The thing with GI is that the puzzle has, like, it's most interesting if a puzzle can lend itself to less than 1p. But yeah, I, I feel like you have to be careful designing a puzzle to make sure that GI is not just GC, but it's definitely possible, and I think it has a very interesting solution space. Yeah, no, the problem is that GI can often be just a worse GC if you can't do less than 1P, because then you discount 6P GC approaches, which can be really useful or really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Up next, we have the next puzzle, Fire Filaments. Quantum Bonds, everyone. Yep, it's here. So, the way quantum bonds work is that you can you can bond them as much as you like and they will still work. So I guess I can... This will work. Yep. However... We're into some shenanigans this week. As soon as there's a D-bond, these things stop moving. So you can't- if you D-bond one quantum bond, it D-bonds all of the other quantum bonds. And yes, uh, it is now available- the website- the event is now available on the, uh, websites. Your metrics are area and trackless instructions enjoy oh wait no it's not trackless instructions it's tracks plus instructions oh right yeah in case you want to use track you can still use track but it also still probably invalidates the one arm with three instructions on a giant track loop solve. How does the output work? Uh, your outputs have to be quantum bonded together. So basically, you can't debond your output because then it would debond the entire 
Uh, these have to be all quantum bonded together. Yeah, spade. Yeah, you can see this is actually a polymer. Yes, this is a polymer. <laughs> uh, which inputs start bonded to what? Oh yeah, your inputs it's... are this and this. And your, your, your two air inputs and your two tin inputs are actually one double air input and one double yeah. tin input. And then your output contains these same shapes. It require it contains sets of iron quantum bonded one hex apart and sets of air quantum bonded one hex apart. But yeah, worth noting that uh, you have this guessed area the puzzle creator correctly. I, th I believe this area is not taken is not taken so you can in theory make this infinite without taking up all of these areas in between <laughs> yes this uh this puzzle was made so. by this <laughs> Also super interested to see the solve for this one. I'm gonna be pretty absent again after this, because again, life is hectic, but yeah. I'll be sure to go over the VODs later and see all of you people's lovely, weird and interesting solves for all the puzzles. Yeah, uh, Spade, there's examples on the website. I'm not sure if they're fully encompassing everything, but yeah, they should help. Wait, is there a couple of showcases for this uh, puzzle? I guess we should get to that. Yeah, right, I was gonna ask, do we have showcases? I think there was five in total. Yeah, you don't get to know about this puzzle yet. <laughs> the week 12 puzzle. is a showcase uh, from Jamu. T ah, this is 490 uh, <laughs> uh product. Very funny. I'm not going to fact check that, but I would guess what it is. This is min rate, it looks like it. Yeah, it's a cycle solve. It's cycles product with the product being 69420. Yeah. Not at min cycles, though. Oh, it's at 140 cycles, true. Uh, I was curious if it was missing that on latency or somewhere else, but it does seem to just be latency. Next up, we have Ooh, a number. height solve from Silex Away. Ooh. Height is actually... There was a little bit of height thrown around in the sec second metrics discussions for this puzzle. Yeah, HR. Is this mid rate? It could be it close. Would to be. It is. Oh, this is min rate. Okay. Yeah, yeah ten, it... ten, ten is min? purified and one is projected. Min rate at three height is impressive. Yeah, I guess three height it gets so interesting to assemble the product see this thing at the end. I remember messing around with that when I was testing for this. Ironically, height was a more play-tested metric than cost. Yep. This, 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 ah, yes. This is, uh, use uh or this is your solution that was slightly too late the deadline we've seen this one already this 
is Biggie's new solution one in showcase. Uh, yeah, she said that she had uh, also submitted this to showcase with notes. Ah uh, yes. Step one, make iron. Step two, copy it twenty six times. Step three, purifiers. Step four, throw down the assembly thing. Speed solved. Last See this one again, I'm reminded Hex Arms are really fun speed solve tech. They are. And we have Mr. Royal Spades. I'm mainly submitting the solve because of the projection trick at the end. I really like that I can leave the Quicksilver bed knowing the god won't do anything. Other than that, this was my first cost solve, so it's not that interesting compared to the fractional jank we've already seen. Enjoy. Projection trick at the end. Yes, Spade, I am also glad that I didn't end up going with height. It didn't seem like a metric with very much going on, ultimately. Yeah. So we've got projection trick at the end. Ah, neat. I see. <laughs> Very cool. Biggie already done with the ferrofilament speed solve. And yeah, it didn't look like a very slow puzzle to speed solve. No, I mean, uh, it's two. But that's still uh, insane. It's two polymers, so you can just make the thing. <laughs> you don't even have to output it six times. Yeah. Is quantum stuff. I think Biggie has probably already messed with quantum stuff. And yeah, Biggie has definitely knows what quantum stuff is. So the speed solve was not entirely possible even. <laughs> yeah. Just a ton of fun. Thank, you. thank everyone for playing. I really enjoyed seeing all of your solves. Congratulations to the winners, and also to everyone else. Thank you for the puzzle, and thank you for joining us.